she's finally coming on that day. So she asked me to stay with her to receive Miss Cobb. So I stood I stood with her for the time until when Miss Cobb had arrived. And um, I had to do her fighters on her right hand. And I can recall that when I did the fighter for Miss Cobb, in spite of her illness, she um, said to me, um, after I did her blood pressure, she said, nothing. Is everything okay? I said, I, would, I normally call her mama. I said, yes, mama. And she said, uh, okay, praise God. And she, I did her SPO, and it was okay. And then when I did her chicken R, which is a sugar test, she said, um, I am a diabetic. And uh, I used to be taking insulin. I said, okay. And I did her chicken R. And when the result came out, I, she asked me, how is it? And I said, oh, chicken R. Your chicken R is okay. She said, praise God. But when the process of her time, because she was one that I had to come and pay my tribute to in spite of her illness. And when the pain struck this heart, there's only one thing that you can hear her say. Lord have mercy upon us. And I remember one day while I was at her side. And the pain struck her. And she cried out, God have mercy upon me now, sister. I took my hand and I touched her hair and I said, Mama, the only thing that you can do when the pain falls is to cry out to me. It's only to follow, know everything. Right. And she said, yes. And I remember during one of my days on my journey, I was telling to her, and Hallelujah. while I was telling to her, um, she said, nothing. I heard a song come to me, and she gave me that hymn, but I cannot remember that hymn. Trust me, I cannot remember that hymn. And she began to say to me, nothing, I want you to call my children. I said, Mama, I don't need your children, but when they type them to come, they will come. But it was so accidentally that this phone had come. And I told him, I said, like, you know your mommy had wanted you. And I don't even know how to get to you, but God said you here to me. And when I was here with this car, she said to me, nothing. I have one thing to say to you. She said, my pastor for the church that I attend, used to attend, said to me that Miss Scott, you will not go sin I before you die. You are going to die before you die. And that's one thing I admire Miss Scott for me. It, it hurt me so much to know that I had received her. And when she died, she cried on my night shift. And I was downstairs, and that night I could not have slept. I keep twisting, I keep turning, I don't know what's wrong. And I came up about eight minutes past in the morning. And when I came up, I told my other co worker that um, I shut my eye last night. My whole mind was on this car. Um, I was there and I called one of my, co uh, my um, patient. She began to call. And I knew I had put a fan on this car, turn on the fan, because sometimes she get hot. And I said to Primus, I said, Miss Primus, I want you to go in and turn off the fan from Miss Cop because Miss Brown don't like fans, so one turn it off. Miss Primus didn't know 
all of the very time. And I found this rubbing on the car. And I said, I must go in and turn off the fan. And then she reached me. That was. When she came and she told me that this part of it. I felt to kiss with my mom. I pressed a while and then I called my boss.
item is equity and equity in question number one. And yes, a lot of people do it. Right? But if you hear anybody pass and say, around here, and say, from cool off, right? Then you realize, well, that lady there was my adopted sister. Right? My mother took me in when I hadn't anybody at all around me. And she cared for me like her own child. And all of our children, our grandchildren, respected me. And they called me Uncle Brown. Just a while ago, one of them made me and said, Oh, my half uncle. <laughs> okay? But what happened is that I went to I went to the hospital to look for Nafsi. But I didn't find her. And at the same time I have my problem because many of you have known that I lost my wife at the same season, right? When she was in the hospital. But unfortunately I asked for the wrong title. Right? But the lady, the lady was in the hospital. You know? She was there, but I keep on saying Nafsi Williams. Right? Never knowing that I should have asked for Nafsi Scott. Right? And when I went back there now, and somebody told me, no, you shouldn't, you should ask for Nafsi Scott. But when I went back there now and asked for Nafsi Scott, they said, lo and behold, she left the hospital. Right? So I didn't get to see her. But she always in my mind. And I always have a love, love her and think about her. So I pray that our children, grandchildren, everyone will lift it. Still, still she won't go off. Right? <laughs> so don't stop. And God bless. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes. Lovely. We are not mourning. We are enjoying the celebration of Nuff Scott's life. Now, my name is Alston Anderson. I hail from Barry. And Papa James, Mr. Cool, was my best friend in school. Rumble together, slept together at Coast Hill, and that's the time when I met his mother. I know it is not an easy thing to bury your mother. As a matter of fact, I spoke to my mother. The Friday night she wasn't sick. And when I went back, the Saturday morning, I met her dead. That's not easy. But it's a good thing for many of you who know that you have a chance to take care of your mother, to see your mother ill, and to know that you would have been a turn rock strength in their life, and that you would have taken care of them. But you should be satisfied that you would have done your best. 
Many people wouldn't know that Mr. Dixon is my father. I lost my mother in yesterday. She died. The maid just came from over the hospital. So at this time, it would be remiss of me not to offer condolences on behalf of the St. Vincent and the Red Cross. One of our daughter-in-law, which is Mrs. Laura James, she would have been behind her husband, I know, 24-7. And I know not only behind her husband, but behind her husband's mother. And I know that she too would be satisfied that they would have done their best. So on behalf of the St. Vincent and the Grenadine Dread Cross, I would like to extend condolences to Mr. Papa James, Laura James, dear, all the family members, immediate and extended family. I want you to know that it's a tough loss, but be not dismayed, but every time, for God will come with you. Africa, we feel up Nagawaya. Greetings everybody here good afternoon. My little piece that I want to say here this afternoon, my family, I part of the family, so on. And I agree with you all. No. See, so now to see, coming to my being, because of my mother. My mother, from a tender age, she told me that. That was like she's sister. So we have a choice but to love she as an aunt, but it's not really our aunt. So what she has is still in she. It distilled over into us like a cup running over, fill and running over. That's what we have when we from Titanaps. She was a gorgeous woman. And I hear to say that we didn't love she very much. But we couldn't get to she because she far from us. But we know and then we check out she. So I say, we grieve with you all. Those are you who know she well. So that's my little piece from the southern part. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We are still open for tributes, so your privilege is yours to come and to do what needs to be done at this time. Praise God. We're still open, you can come. In the meantime, I'll ask the musician to just give me a little thing or two now. Yeah. I'm bothered now.
on behalf of my parents and other members of the family, just wish to extend sincere condolences to the family of the deceased. Now growing up in Chumoka, Mrs. Scott was one of those really exemplary mothers in the village. Well respected and loved everyone basically. So as little ones, we look forward to going up to GPs and passing by Paul House and then Pope and then stepping further up by Mr. and, and, and Mrs. Sentinels, yeah, and house to get milk and stuff. And then out of that relationship, that kind of loving village relationship that unfortunately we hardly have these days, we would have grown close to all of every one of our children. Mr. Cool, Troy, Denise, and, and everybody, you know? So I'm happy that Mrs. Scott, Lopsy, as, as very well known. I'm happy that she lived the life she lived, that she lived such such a, an exemplary life, such a motherly and clear caring life that she could have been an example. We're not short of examples as, as much adults as we are now. So as the, the fine lady who spoke earlier said that she she is that type of of God mother now based on how how our godmother was taught. So at least, if nothing else, we have that powerful example that we can emulate and we can show to, to the younger generation. So may our soul rest in peace. All the best family members. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Just read this straight from Keith. My name is Byron Wilson, also known as Nopsy Son, that you didn't call. I get to know the deceased and our family sometime around 1979 after the volcanic eruption. When Choi and I went to the same school in Barry and I asked him if I could come down and spend time. So you know those four years people used to go and spend time by other people's home. And I must say that I was welcomed into the family by Mama. And we all lived as brothers and sisters in the home up until her death. When I go and see her, she will still refer to me as my son that Troy brought to her. I remember the old years when we used to be up at the GPs and I came down for a holiday and was going up back. And even if a little five dollars, she was a chicken in my hand to walk with. And we know back then, five dollars used to be plenty, plenty money. And I'm so happy that she lived a long and good life. And now that the Lord has called her to be with him, we shouldn't really be sad too much, but we should be joyful that she is in a better place and we all must celebrate our life because she was a good person. And my mom died in 1983 and mama was the only person I called mom after that up until her death. So may her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. Do we have anybody else? We'll make allowance for two more persons. Thank you. 
Thank you. Let's praise the Lord. Yeah. Come on, let's give the Lord a bigger praise. Yeah. Come on, what's going on here? Let's look quiet. Um, my name is Curtis Scott. Um, I'm from Montreal. I'm from Barry, but I'm living in Montreal. Um, um, Napsi was my aunt. He was married to my, my uncle, Selwyn Scott. I just thank God I have this opportunity to be here to celebrate our um, home great service. Um, I used to leave Barley as a kid and go uninvited. There's no WhatsApp to call to say, well, can I come? I just hop on a bus, Cherry Smith, something like that, get up at um, GP's and spend some time with them and then go back to Barley. I used to be enjoying going up to GP's except for one thing. There was a man named um, Mr. Um, what's his name? Mr. Sintelay Black. <laughs> that man scared me. <laughs> when I go up there to give peace. But um, last, um, last, last July, I had the opportunity to, um, to spend some time with her at the, um, at the nursing home with my mom. I know my mom is watching here from St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Hi, Mom. I know she would have been glad to be here, but circumstances beyond control, she was not able to be here. So I just want to take this opportunity to wish all my cousins um, my condolences, and may she continue to sleep in peace. God bless you all. We have one more. There is such a person. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy word and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou so anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hallelujah. You may take your seats just for a little bit. Let me, on behalf of my family, my wife is here, the rest of my family, the Church of God, 
Chateaubelair, and in the Chateaubelair district, and by extension, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Extend to the family of the late Nazi Scott our profound condolences at this the time of our passing. I was fortunate to be her pastor for 18 years. And I don't think Mr. Cole you know her much better than I. I know the good, the bad, and the ugly, ugly, ugly. But through it all, she has been a blessing to many lives and a blessing to the Lord God Almighty. I pray that as you grieve now, that you would not grieve as the people who have no hope, but you would grieve knowing that your mom has lived a full life. 86 is plenty. Some of us may not be that fortunate, but to we say, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Another of our pastors who was privileged to pastor here at the Tomoka New Testament Church of God is Bishop Gosnell Williams, and he would come at this time. His primary job is to do the opening prayer, but he's not limited. He comes to what you can do at this time. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to be here this evening to share in the funeral homegoing service of one who I am going to love and respect. I'm going to answer this time that we stand for press. Let's bow our hearts in God's presence at this time. Father, we, your people, we come this evening, Lord God, to give thanks. We search our hearts today, Lord God, and we, we find it that all that you have done for this life and for what you represent in this community, we come back, Lord God, to give you thanks. We thank you for the battles which she would have fought over the years. And the last enemy seemed to have conquered her death. So Lord God, we thank you this evening because she is no longer any victim, any victim but she is victorious. And God, as she marches on, we who are left behind will remember her lessons which she taught us. Some with much diligence and dexterity, and some were in the rough and tumble of life. We learned a lot. So we give thanks this evening for our presence with us over the years. And oh God, as we come together this evening, let us do so with a heart that is filled with joy and happiness, knowing that one day we will not meet again. We ask for your blessings upon all that could be done here this evening. I pray that we we'll all come to the place at the end that we would say to ourselves that it was good to have been a part of what 
you have done today. And God, as we leave, those who are mourning at this time, I ask that you would comfort their hearts. And those who would direct the affairs of this office, I pray for your Holy Spirit's direction. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Praise God. I want to ask you to remain standing. We're going to sing. We're going to have to yourself. Not true? Yes. Come on. Um, I'm, going to sh by, by, I'm going to use my pastoral privilege now, Mr. Cole, to shift the program a little bit. And the worship would come a little later down the road. But we're going to set the pace at this time. We want to do the first hymn in the order of service. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Will your anchor in the storms of life when the clouds are falling?
Uh, give me half your seats, please. Uh, and those of you who are a little pious, I'm a, a noisy kind of happy guy. Yeah. So I may make some noise and happy myself. If you're vexed, uh, you're, 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 you're going to happy yourself with me. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to listen to the scripture readings at this time. The first, the second, and the third to be read by Bronte Scott, daughter, Tia James, granddaughter, and Katina Scott, granddaughter. In that order, please. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Grace and peace. Our first scripture reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from verse 13 to 18. Verse 13. But I would not have, I'm reading from the New King James Version. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that is sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we said unto you by the word of the Lord, that we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be reading the second reading, Psalms 116, reading from verse 13 to 18. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid, thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, knowing the presence of all his people. This is the word of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. The third scripture reading is taken from John chapter 14 from verses 1 to verse 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know and the way ye you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where the dog goes, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you very much, ladies. I want to invite you to stand, please, while we sing the second song in the order of service. Through all the changing scenes of life, sorry, sorry about that. Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. Through all the changing scenes of life in
seats, please. We will go right into the special tributes, after which we would spend some time in praise and worship. Hallelujah. I'll call the following persons in this order, and you can come. I don't need to come and call you again. Um, Miss Esther Charles and Sinead Williams, family friends. Brother-in-law, Mr. Milford Samuel. The New Testament Church of God, Trumaca, and Pastor Gosnell Williams. Please come in that order. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. First of all, let me say condolences to the rest of the family. I am part of the family as well. My name is Milford Samuel, and I am brother in law to the deceased, Nopsy Scott. And as we celebrate our life today, it would be remiss of me not to say a few words for somebody whom I have known for so long. I'd be very shocked because I don't want to take away from the eulogy. Naxi was the older sister of my loving wife, Elita, better known as Bibi. She was also aunt to her two da daughters, Cassie and Carissa. I knew Naxi from when I was in my early teens, early twenties. That's when I had begun to quote her sister. <laughs> to me, she was always a welcoming person, fun loving and full of life. Many were the times when her sister, now my wife, would spend time at her home in GPs part of Chumaka. My wife lived in Spring Village. She always welcomed me at her home when I came to visit her sister. That was something I treasured because it saved me the trouble of walking the long distance from Rosa, where I lived, to Spring Village. Napsi was a good cook. I enjoyed her cooking. I enjoyed her black cake. I enjoyed her papa wine. She and her husband made in those early days. And I remember the first time they gave me that wine to drink. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was juice. So I took a quick gulp, and because of the strength of it, I had to cough. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, Samoa, where do you? <laughs> and the husband was in the background saying, you taste stuff, you taste stuff, man. <laughs> Those were the times. Napsi and I had a very good relationship. I would say an extremely good relationship. It was true that love we had for each other that she gave me the title of best brother-in-law in the world. I felt uncomfortable with the title because we are all so full of our own imperfections. But I had to bear it for her sake, because that's what she thought of me. And whenever we meet, the first thing she would do, she would smile, and she would say, Ahuda Samu, the best brother in the world, Napsi was a counselor in her own right. Whenever you engage in conversation with her, she always found the time to give some advice. She was a strong-willed person 
and held firmly to her convictions, whether right or wrong. She lived a humble life and weathered the storms of life by putting her faith in God. In her moments of pain and struggle, I believe she remained strong in her faith, believing in God to provide her with the strength to face each day. That is inevitable. There's nothing we could do about it. Our time is limited. Today we bid farewell to someone we have grown to love. A mother, grandmother, aunt, niece, cousin, and my dear sister-in-law. Our physical presence has left us. But we should let the memories she left behind remain with us forever. May our soul rest in peace.
spread the fitting of the Nazis scatter in all. Um, she is very effervescent and filled with life. Um, I happen to have known her even before I came to be her pastor. And um, she was that person who you wanted, if you, if you were someone who wanted to have a road map in life, she would have been a good person to be around. Because she certainly understand, understand life and how to live. And she sought to make that known to those whom she encountered. She watched no face. She said what she had to say. And you couldn't be vexed with her because what she said was what you need to hear. I want to use a particular quote from the great Apostle Paul just to be, just to use as a pretext for what I really want to say, which would not be long anyway. Um, Paul, at the end of his life, so he was more fortunate than our sister Scott, because he could have spoken and relate to death in a in a way that. I find that it is very fitting and uh, resembles the Nazi scat I know. He was speaking to his young friend Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And here is what he says in verse 6, 7, and 8. He said, For I am now ready. To be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give shall give me at that day and not to me only but for unto all those who love is appearing no see this is not Nazi Paul said I'm ready wasn't she ready yes. oh yes she was ready she was always ready. I remember having visited her when she took sick. And she was still at the house, still at, at home. And the challenge I had to get there, because to climb that, those steps, <laughs> it was really a challenge. <clears throat> and every time I go, I go with much more vigor and fervor because I know I was going to hear something that would be able to help me in my ministry here in Chumoka. So she was ready to encourage. Huh? Paul said because um, he was ready to depart. And I have heard enough from Napsis Kat over those few times I was able to see her to realize that she was ready to depart. If it came to that, she had made her mind up that she was going to be with her Savior and Lord. Huh? And the, the, the next clause in the expression from the Apostle says, I have fought a good fight. Yes. Forgive me, Pastor. 
preaching is in my bones. <laughs> yes. He said, I have fought, and she fought very manfully as though she was a woman. Huh? Those of us who know her knew that her life was one that she had to fight. Mr. Yes. yes, mommy had to fight. And she fought many battles. She fought many battles at this. She won some and she lost some. Isn't that right? And she's, she's here today, not going to fight again. Huh? The last battle has been won. And I believe that she's now safe in the arms of Jesus. I see her when I, when I first encountered Sister Scott. I was at home because you know why? I, I, I was accustomed to the same sort of things at, home, at my house. She looks, she, she approached like the same like my mother. There's a close resemblance in the way they order their lives. They stood up and they see what they have to say. And who don't like it, better not it. And they never spoke nonsense. There were people who, I believe, who, are, who were thinking great, greatly and the, the, the pressures of life that they endure forged them into the individuals they were, they, they, were, they are, because my mom is still alive. And I am going to say here this evening that Chumoka is a little poorer because she lies in this casket today. I want to encourage the family. You have lost a stalwart. For many of us who have lost our loved ones, sometimes we, as if we have lost our parents, and sometimes as if we are gasping and don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. But I want to assure you this evening that Sister Scott would be happy if you would live the life that she lived, one which was to help others and one which was to point people to the straight and narrow way. May us all rest in peace this evening. Blessings. Bishop Williams said he wanted to sing. I wonder where. <laughs> At this time, we're going to change our positions as we welcome the, the worship team to come and to just lead us in a time of praise and celebration. They're not going to be more than 12 minutes. So they would come now and they could stretch the 12 to 20, but let it remain at 12. <laughs> praise God. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I was going to say someday, but the sister started already. And we heard that sister starts love. Okay. All right. So we're going to sing it again because I think it was meant to be sung today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So we're going to sing, my trials, hair, and art will cease. Someday, somebody give him a praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Our sister has gone to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. So let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My trials never are done.
God. Hallelujah. At this time, I want to call somebody whose head is hot. My school friend from when the devil used to wear short pants. <laughs> Mr. Cool, come to your little piece about Mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Then this means a cool down, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to sing with me. Wilson. 
Mom raised her children with love and dedication. When I moved to Chomata to live with her in around 1973, she was self-employed in the handicraft industry. I recall all of us in the household helping her to remove the pieces of paper on which she drew the flowers and animals, then skillfully used the raffia to produce colorful flowers and animals on her baskets and table mats and those other things. Looking back at it now, one would conclude that she was an accomplished artist and designer. Mom wanted her children to focus on their education and she ensured that we were equipped with all that was necessary to make that happen. It was up to each of us to live up to her expectation and be motivated by our own self-determination. I recall one time when I was at home on vacation from the Barley Secondary School. A friend of mine wrote me a letter, but unfortunately my mom intercepted that letter before it got to me. For days after that I was weeping and ducking each time I passed close to her. I told Troy that I blamed him for facilitating the diversion of that letter. He still denies it up to today. I was him. Mom was always a committed individual. She loved her children and family, especially her church family. She toiled and toiled to support the construction of this very building where we are here today. Yeah. Members of the family can recall the many pots of food she prepared when the work was done on this building. She did not have a job, but she was committed to making regular financial contributions to the construction of this church building. I want to say special, as I go on, I want to say a special thanks to Bishop Dan Richards behind there. In the most part, and Pastor Don Sipiton for working with us as we encountered a few logistical and scheduling challenges while planning this funeral. Now, Mom was never afraid to speak her mind. We all know that, right? Yes, wait. In fact, I recall when I took Dora home to meet my mom sometime in 1979. She told Dora like this, and I quote, Watch him go then. He's an alien, not take the eye off him. That was my mom. That was my mom. In December 2020, we made the difficult decision to transfer mom to a nursing home where we felt that she would receive the necessary professional care. That decision, unfortunately, became an issue for some persons who kind of spread the rumor that Mr. Poole sent his mother to the poor home. Folks, a nursing home is not a poor home. I just wanted to say that as I put you this unit. And as I said, mom spoke on my hand to know, continue that legacy. Mom's journey was not always a smooth one. However, there were good Samaritans who offered support along the way. And we would like to say thank you to all of those good Samaritans who supported, supported us through that. We will all miss mom's smile, her laugh, her advice, her bubbly personality. I know all of us will miss her famous black cake at Christmas time. I want to thank all of you for being here today to honor her memory. She loved all of you and her memory will live on in all of us. In her final days with us, her constant mind showers, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Those were the last audible words that came from her lips. I know that she was being led by the Savior Jesus Christ. And we're comforted by the fact that she lived a very good Christian life. The rest in eternal peace. Now. Thank you very much, Gould. Could I indulge us to stand the place while we reassure ourselves? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Is this one? Will the clouds unfold 
When the clouds unfold, sorry, the wings of strife. And the strong tides lift, and the cables stream. Will my anchor drift? Offer me. Hallelujah. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when they're flying?
We also would like to convey condolences from Pastor Glover Burke. Um, she's unable to be with us because of health concerns. And I pray that you would accept our sympathies at this time as you mourn. I want to thank the brethren from the Lomans Church. The musicians, they always come to Chateaubriand District for inspiration. So tomorrow when they play in convention, they will be bad like nobody. Because they would have been inspired by the suffering breeze. Right, right? Yeah. Amen. Always good to have you. Minister Samuel, Pastor Samuel, sorry. Good to have you from Vermont also. My last physical encounter with Sister Scott was on the 11th of March this year. In the nursing home, in which she spent her last days it was 10 days before she died. And when I went into the room, I said, Sister Scott, you know who's talking there? He said, yes, Pastor. <laughs> she had all her faculties intact. We conversed, we chatted from one thing to the next. And I reached the point where I asked her, as a sister Scott, should God call you home anytime now? Are you ready? And she answered in a vociferous way, Pastor, I am ready. I want this evening, the Bishop Williams looked at my notes, I don't know why he wouldn't subscribe. <laughs> but I had my notes open and he looked at my notes and he saw 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6 to 8. <laughs> Report and comment Timothy said, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept it of faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all of them that love his appearance. Father, take this word now. And oh God, let it be manifested in the lives of people today. Hide me behind the cross, oh God, and let the power of your Holy Spirit speak to lives and challenge hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to us for the next few minutes. I'm not a long funeral speaker, so don't believe that you're going to stay here whole night. On the caption, ready. Sister Scott repeated the word, yes, I'm ready. When I visit the sick, especially those that are in a few days before they would move on, I listen carefully. And she keep on emphasizing the issue of readiness. She said, Pastor, I want to scratch my shoulders for me. And I scratch her shoulders. She said, me have to look, raise me up. I said, but how you raise up? She said, scratch me one. <laughs> Anyhow, I manage and I raise her up. She said, put me head good. He said, fix me neck. He said, me head too low. Me hand won't move. And I did all of that just before Tanti Dora arrived. And as I was putting this, these thoughts together, they came back to me that some of us need to be fixed up. Like Sister Scott. I had to fix her up. Because she needed me then to put her hand good. She couldn't raise her hand. I knew that death was coming her way. And she could 
you will she said, move my hand, baby. And I move her hand. And I'm, I looked at her hands this evening, and that's exactly where I placed them, Mr. Poole. <laughs> there are some of us who are listening to me this evening. You need to get a few things fixed up. In order for you to be ready for when your name is called, you need to get a few things fixed up. Ask yourself, am I ready? If I, do, if I go home tonight and I don't wake up tomorrow, ask yourself, am I ready? Yeah, you can put your head in your phone and ignore me, but you're hearing me go loud and clear. So don't believe that you will ignore me. Are you ready? And if you're honest with yourself, some of you would say, no, I'm not ready. I want a little longer time. Time is not on our side. Uncle, let's good evening to you, my good friend and boy. Time is not on our side to rearrange our own lives. Time is not on our side to do the results and that we need to do and to fix the few things that we think are out of shape. While we try to fix ourselves and there are certain things within our purview to do, the things that are outside of us that we need the Lord Jesus Christ to intervene on our behalf so we could say like Paul, for I am now ready. I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Sometimes I think of my own death. And oh look, Bishop Scott in the casket. And how oh, my wife would cry. And the children would be out of control. And I would not even smile back at them. My face gonna be stiff like old. Gone forever. Only thoughts of me would linger on. What legacy do we have to leave? When our departure time comes, the plane is ready to move off from our Argyle International. You have boarded. Are you ready for the flight? Are you ready for the flight? To be ready means that you have to be in a suitable state for a particular course of action. That means that you ought to be engaged in a different situation. The question is this evening, how fully prepared are you and I to meet our God? Let me tell you something. New Testament Church of God, he had nothing to do with that. Those of you from the Methodist community, nothing. Those of you from the spiritual Baptist or wherever you're from, religion can't usher you into God. So if you think you will hook up on religion and your relationship with God is in shambles, think again. Are we duly, duly equipped? Have we completed the task assigned to us? Have we adjusted our lives so we could be in readiness to meet our God? Have we rearranged our lifestyles so we could face the next phase of our lives? And that is the life beyond this life. Am I really, really ready if my number is called 
And if your number is called tonight, why you keep on saying so? Nobody is saying. Why you don't stop talking like that? I don't know why. But if your number is to be called tonight or next week or when, are you really ready? Are you really ready? Oh, one favorite um, chorus we sing, ready or not, the Lord is calling. Ready or not, he's coming again. So trim your lamps. Trim your lamps. Keep them burning. This is scripture tells us that we must be always ready. How ready are we to tell others of the good news of Jesus Christ? How ready are we to preach the word? Be ready to do it, whether it's convenient or not. How ready are we to correct the things that confront us in life? How ready are we to encourage and to encourage with patience and instruction? How ready are we? Sister Scott said, Pastor, I'm ready. If Jesus is to call me home, I am ready. She said some other stuff to me, I wouldn't tell you what. She didn't call your name, Mr. Cool. But we weren't talking about you. You see, how ready are we to do all that we can to get sin of our, out of our lives? How ready are we to put the flesh under subjection? How ready are we to get rid of the malice and the jealousy out of our lives? How ready are we to let go of unforgiveness? And I come against that spirit of evil now. Because every time there is a death, you hear holy for things are to reap up. Holy for this and that and argue with this and argue with that and be with it. God forbid! Amen. You will go to hell in that state of unforgiveness. Yeah. How ready are we to lay aside? Right to the Hebrews in Hebrews 12 and verse 1 reminds us, Wherefore seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside. Oh God, help me today. Lay aside every weight. Oh God. Every weight that so easily beset us. My friends, this evening I beg of you, let us run this race with the patience of Almighty God. So when he calls us, we could stand up bold and assuredly and say, yes, I'm ready to be offered. Amen. Sister Scott has run her race. Some of us have started. Some of us may fall start, but we start a man calling you back. He said, run. You go on, go on, run. How ready are we to let go of the greed? I, I, I'm gonna put a little coffin here and your scrap has nice. Yeah. Yeah. I am not the permanent part of preacher, you know. But I'm gonna watch that. I'm gonna stand for English. I'm gonna hold English back. So as long as you could understand me. Oh God, there are some scrapness people in this life here. Look at some scrapness people that go to church. You think the scrapness alone, the scrapness? Oh, the light too bad. So Scott, so Scott, if she go to heaven, there's a preach, Pastor, preach. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you something.
some of you who are listening to me who are in high positions in society. You see the nepotism that you carry now with? God will hold you responsible for that. That is only some people more equal than others. Watch yourselves. It's a sin. Are you ready to put aside your spiteful self? Oh God. I will miss a preach get Mr. Cool get he from. You're spiteful too much. Huh? But thank you that I let it go. In order to reach that state of readiness, we got to let that go. The injustice and the unfairness that we carry on with, we've got to let them go. Don't believe that we in this life are, are, are subjected to the things of human behavior. Moses had an anger problem. And Moses vexed when he fell and Moses disobeyed God and hit the rock and said, Your rebels are the drink now. Abraham had a, a fearful issue. He was afraid to tell the Pharaoh, Dora is my wife. Tell him he's a sister. He was really sister. But I said, tell them this, 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 and then I will kill you. Some of us have become fearful. I know you all can't sleep tonight. Somebody can't sleep tonight. Because of some things I'm telling you now. Some of you can't sleep tonight, but you better shut your eyes and ask God for sleep. It's not a jump you go right in. It's your conscience can deal with you. Moses, not Moses, David was a womanizer. He had issues with women. Every woman is he want. Am I speaking to some man this evening? No, I'm not talking to any males. No. Every fractal you see, you feel they must heist it up. Eh? Let me tell you something, brethren. I'm going to close. Anything that stands between you and your relationship with God means you're not ready. It means that you are not ready to stand before the maker and say, Lord, look me, open the book now. Tell me what is there that I need to answer. I don't want to wait then to answer. Let me answer now. Because what is written in that book, no lawyer can defend you. Are you ready to throw in your towel? Are you ready to throw your towel that is basked in sin and shame? You have to answer that for yourself. You have to answer that for yourself. And I have to answer it too. I pray this evening as I, as I wrap this, this few thoughts up that we will take a hold of ourselves and analyze where we are and from whence we have strayed. Ask God, say, God, let me come and forgive me, Lord. Make me ready to see your face. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just before I ask Bishop Scott to come and offer a prayer for the family, is there somebody this evening who you have listened to these few feeble words I've spoken? And you're saying, but you know, I'm not ready. You're here this evening and you know you're not ready. I want me to pray for you. You don't have to Bishop Scott to pray for you. Just raise your hand. You don't have to stand up. Just raise your hand. Honesty is the best policy, isn't that true? Yes. Just raise your hand. That's all you need to do. Just raise your hand. You know you're not ready. 
You know, you could raise it a little higher than where it is below the bench. Yes, I've seen that hand. Is there another hand? Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else who would say, I am not ready, and I need the praise of those I love? Is there somebody else? I've seen that hand in the back also. Is there somebody else? There has to be somebody else who is saying, Lord, make me ready. The time of my departure is at hand. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. May God help us. This is my prayer. Precious God. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Wonderful words of life. I've been praying, but it will be remiss of me if I don't take at least a minute. May I? Just to offer my sincere condolences to my family, my relatives. I live in a piece of cool. My schoolmate, my good friend. And I see it. <laughs> uh, cut. Praise God. I, and I heard about the passing of I'm seeing relatives by marriage. Her husband was my mother's first cousin, so they're close. I say I have to be here, at least to pay my last respects to this powerful woman I knew for a long time. And so, take comfort. Children, relatives, everyone. I can almost say I'm certain that she's in the hand of the Lord because I know the life that Napsi lived. What impressed me most about this great woman, I know that she suffered much adversities in this life but she never relinquished her faith in Almighty God. She stood firm to her belief in Jesus Christ. And that's the way to live. And that's the way to die. So once again, to our children, all of them, I've seen Maverick, where is he? is outside. Think Maverick and I are for, are for children, Maverick and Mr. Cole, the two closest to me. Um, closest, one of them. Uh, we went to Barley Secondary School together. One of them gave me a name, which I will be saying. And that person know who he is. Came all up in the same kids where I lived and called me the same name. Yeah, we were close. We are close <laughs> together. So we're going to pray at this time. I recognize my wonderful school teacher, Samo. Can I say Samo? Samo. Great teacher. Bless the Lord. Shall we all stand? And can I ask the relatives to just come? There's space enough just around the casket or in the aisle. And there are two persons who raise their hands and say, I'm not ready. I want Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you first before I pray for the relatives? Where are you? Can you come? I just um, did a funeral in Beckway. And one of the ladies who took part she said, she, been, she had been serving God for many years, and she said, I give my heart to Jesus in a funeral. Come right into persons. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. And 
just in case you did not raise your hand and you want to be a part of this, you can come now. Anybody else? We're giving you a few seconds. You're not ready and you need God. Come now. Come quickly. Come quickly. This service today is twofold for the memory of the deceased and for those who are alive. All right. Hallelujah. So far, thank you. Um, let, okay, but let me tell you. Come, come, let me tell you. Come, come. Come, yes. So, okay. So we still know. And um, if you know me, I'm a very serious man when it comes to these things. So make sure you know that you are genuine in your request, okay? Stretch your hand towards them. Hallelujah. Isn't it fitting that even as the Lord has welcomed our sister Scott home to glory, that he's about to welcome two souls, uh, three if this one is genuine, home to him. So Father God, I pray that Christ will be formed in them. Oh God, I pray that you will open up to them the gates of righteousness that they will go in. I pray, oh God, that you will do a mighty work in their lives. Give them the reality of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, you will manifest yourself unto them. Oh God, I pray you will break the effects of sin and unrighteousness every cause from of their life. Lord God, Jehovah, let them know that you love them and that Jesus died for them. For there is still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Touch them now. Wash them with your precious blood. Jesus, Jesus, oh God, may they never go back. Lord, may they start their journey with you, a journey of power, a journey of grace. May they know you and the power of the resurrection in Jesus' name. Deliver this young lady from the hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Every demon that has tied down our destiny, I take authority over you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break the power of alcohol. Those wicked substances from our body right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break every curse that came upon her from a child. Those negative pronouncements that was made over her from a child when she was in primary school, I break it now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I paralyze every evil hand upon her now. I break those curses. Break in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my God. Those who know her, those who know to pray, she's going to need help. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. My God, I'm not taking up too much time. Let me tell you this. If you know the God that, that we saw, we preach about, I, when I came back from same kids, I lived there for a long time. I saw a woman, Gyori, you are no Gyori. I knew her. I was a police officer. Arrested her. She was on the street. Strolled and drugs and alcohol and prostitution. When I heard Gyori testify about the blood of Jesus and the power of God to deliver, I jumped, man of God. Never write off people. Jesus, Jesus. We touch you all. Shaka Riba to Toto. Come. Come closer to me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Toraba Kataka. Reka Shorobo Konde. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I bring the relatives before you now. Hallelujah. I come in the name of Jesus Christ. 
You're the God of comfort, the God of grace, the God of love. Oh God, Napsi has laid the way. She has lived a life, oh God, of example for her children, her grandchildren, her great grandchildren, oh God. And the best way they can remember her and honor her memories to serve the God she served and she loved. I pray God that your hand of comfort will be upon them, even in the time of bereavement. As the writer says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Pray that they will stay together in unity, oh God. I pray. Hold the hands, oh God. Keep them from evil. Bless them as you are about, oh God, to lay the last remains of our sister. Help the relatives to rejoice and to know that she is in a better place. Nobody have to move, help her move her hand again. She is with the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say amen. amen. There's a land that is sweet. And by faith we can sit afar For the Father is
Eu vou comer a série aqui então. Vamos pular, filho. 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 Vamos pular, filho.
I didn't realize it's the color of the casket until now. It's right here. I see it now. Video. It's on my pussy. That is on my pussy. Yeah. Me look for your church. Me not see like you just abandon me. No, you're not come back. Okay, well, may I invite you now. Uh, how we can proceed to that next week Sunday? A week of proceed services in the church that next week Sunday. So you can't see me now, invite you now. Yeah. 6.30 Sunday evening. And. And, um. Hey, Mimo, yeah, that the one goes to some. Right, good. Go on. Good. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, bro, good. <laughs>
Okay, again, please. Thank you very much. Could I have your attention, please, for the next few moments? We are reminded from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We are also reminded from the word of God that we should not let anything move us. That we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And may we brethren be persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Bow your heads while we pray. Father and God, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you today, O oh God, that we recognize you as Lord of our lives. And, O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. We are reminded, O oh God, that you are the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in you, though you were dead, we shall live. And Almighty God, we pray even now for this family and we ask your blessing. We ask that your comfort and grace will be with them 
And oh God, the spirit of separation would, far, would fall far from them. Almighty God, into your loving care, we commend the spirit of Nazi Scott to you. And we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, anticipating the great resurrection when the dead in Christ come forth with a new body and endless life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The book of Revelation reminds us in Revelation 14 and verse 13. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, and henceforth ye set the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Into your hands we pray for abiding grace unto this family and for your ever presence with them. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen, amen. and amen. If we, if we, are we going to sing? If we're going to sing, there is a, a hymn in the order of service. Um, when peace like a river attendeth my way. Those of you who know to sing, could you sing, please? When peace like a river Shall resound, shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Oh, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. Let us sing the next hymn on the order of service. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. The love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll break the to heaven, what a day of joy. 
rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When while we walk the pilgrim path, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, Let us then be true and faithful. Trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory. Onward to the prize before Onward us. To the prize before us. Soon his beauty will, will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. Sing the chorus again. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. Could we do some selected choruses of your choice, please? Courses of your choice, or could we ask the? Is the music still around? Yeah. Yeah. Could we ask the music to just? Yeah. Nobody is singing.
Everybody say your final farewells. <laughs>